Hello there! As you may know, I'm a RuneScape music connoisseur and love using it in my videos. So today I thought I would go over how I use it and general information if you want to use music as well. I'll go over how to get the music, the principles of using it and give you some good songs that I enjoy using or just listening to at the end. I'm not a copyright lawyer, far from it in fact, however I still think it's important to put my personal experience out there as getting strikes on your channel is a thing that people fear, so it's important to talk about. As far as general songs go, not many songs will get your videos taken down, most will get claimed where the revenue will be split between you and the claimant depending on the band or record label, you will end up getting different splits. I would avoid using copyrighted songs altogether, however, it's just it's better safe than sorry. As for video game songs, meaning songs that were composed in-house for specific video games, while from my knowledge they are copyrighted material, and so is gameplay and pretty much any asset related to the video game, gaming companies don't tend to strike videos or claim videos using their games in our current culture, so any song that was made specifically for a game should be fine. I've used tracks from Sly 2, Ratchet and Clank 3, Simpsons Hit and Run and Spiral Knights and I never had any issues. It's always good to go on Google or Reddit and research if other people have had issues using a certain video game song in the past, just in case. Generally speaking, shouldn't be an issue, but honestly, you better do your research cause you want to avoid issues altogether. As far as RuneScape music goes, I can't find the tweet anymore, but during the debacle that was Twitch streams getting taken down due to copyrighted songs, I remember Jagex tweeting that RuneScape songs were for a game. I use RuneScape songs abundantly and never had issues in over a year. This video is going to focus on RuneScape songs since, well, that is what this video is about. So let's divide this segment in two parts and tackle where to get the songs first. I get my songs mostly from either the wiki or YouTube. Generally they have all the songs I've ever needed and the wiki has extra information on them which can be helpful at times. So with that said, uh, how do we get them? Well, first you can just set up OBS or any other software that captures audio in game, play the song and just hit record. In case you don't have the time however, there are easier options. On YouTube I use any web downloader, copy the link, paste the link on the downloader and just download. They work just fine and I never really had any issues with it and you can usually download directly in mp3 as well. On the wiki you will want to search the name of the song or just go to the list of all of the songs. You can hear them all in your browser but if you right click the player you can save the songs and that's it, you got the song. As app however, if downloaded from the wiki, the songs will come in a OGG format, which most editing softwares don't tend to accept, so we'll have to convert that. First, you'll want to download Audacity if you haven't already. Then you drag the song to Audacity and export the song as mp3. And that's pretty much it. You can also convert multiple tracks at the same time. During my tier list I convert around 100 tracks every single time, the same thing applies here, you just drag the tracks and you export them, this time you want to change from an entire project to multiple files, and then you just export them. It, it's pretty easy. You can also convert to other audio formats, I'm just using mp3 because that tends to be the most common. And finally we have arrived at the best part of the video, the one where I can yep about my own shit. Instead of going through every general concept I have, I'll just go over some of them and for others I'll just use examples from my videos. I find examples better to explain what I mean, however there will be spoilers for no bank, so heads up for that. First up, and most importantly, audio balance. This is something that is imperative and something you need to care about if using music. Your voice should always be above the song. Personally, I put the songs at higher volume than many other creators because I want people to be able to clearly listen to the song. It can be a challenge to level both things properly, so pay extra attention to this. I'm saying this because it took me several episodes of rough audio balancing to get it right, so believe me, it's really important. 
Other than that, songs, generally speaking, are used to enhance the video. They can fill in gaps, elevate moments, or just give an extra texture to your story. Just as an aside, I already created a tutorial going over how to make RuneScape music videos in 2024, where I talk about the opposite thing where my video was supposed to complement the song. For us, it's the opposite, where the songs complement the video, but if you do have the time, it's useful to go and watch that as there are some nuggets of information that I won't cover here. Avoid giving people whiplash. While choosing a song for a specific moment to enhance it can be good, if you have, say, four clips back to back to back that are of different tone, you could choose a song for each one to match their vibe, but people will get whiplash from it. If each clip lasts, say, 30 seconds and they go from relaxed to over the top to sad to hype, while they might match the vibe of the clips, people feel a bit confused over what to feel. I personally very rarely get songs that frequently and let large chunks of them play out. Lastly, music can also be given a space to be part of your narrative. Due to the pacing I choose for my videos and while I love my voice, sometimes I need to shut the fuck up. So in a progress video, I find it useful to use music to break the monotony that is commentary, be it live commentary or voiceover. I think this is actually a very underused tool in progress videos and I would love to see it more. So, with all of those little concepts out of the way, I'm gonna go to my no bank 8 and explain why I chose certain songs and what role they play in the video and the narrative. The first thing I want to talk about, and I do acknowledge that this is a bit on the wackier side, the phase 2 intro. The song... I used there was actually from Sly 2, and it's the song that plays while choosing the first episode on the menu, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Now, why use that song? Well, this is one of the few cases where the song makes the video. I was listening to the Sly 2 OST, and this song came on, and honestly brought a lot of memories, and I just thought, Wait, this is perfect for an intro credit sequence that shows all the NPCs and places I'll interact with during phase 2. If it weren't for the song coming on, that intro sequence would just not exist. This just goes to show that sometimes music can be a driving factor of your visuals and give you ideas for things to do. On the first explanation sequence, where I am setting up the goal of the episode, the song you hear is Adventure. Today, I want to tie a loose end I left a couple of episodes ago. I want to get the gold accumulator. Usually when you start an episode where the stakes are low and all you have at that moment is the excitement of going on an adventure, you want songs that are somewhat relaxed but have that dash of, uh, well, uh, adventure. They are usually very good to set the mood in the viewer to essentially ask them to come along with you on your journey. I've used Adventure here, but also I've used Newbie Melody, Home Sweet Home, amongst other tracks. All of them are somewhat toned down, but still have this fun, exciting vibe to them, which are perfect to set the mood. Especially when it's pretty common for the first few minutes of a progress video to be mostly live commentary, the creator greeting people back, and such. These tracks can be the perfect mood setter. During the first montage, which is a thing I like doing to break the monotony of commentary, you hear pick and shovel. It's a pretty epic song, very exciting vibes. The reason why this song is here actually has more to do with the pacing. When I make these level up montages for dopamine's sake, I don't want the clips to meander for 10 seconds each, otherwise, you know, it will become boring very quickly, which is the reason why most content creators actually tend to skip them. For me, I have them at last around a second and a half, maybe two seconds depending on how many clips I have and I put a faster tempo song on them. This has to do with, well, again, the pacing. If the video feels snappy because, you know, you have a clip every two seconds that is constantly changing, the song somewhat needs to correspond to that. Usually, when I don't use commentary and the clip is slower, such is the case of No Bank One during the first sequence where I am struggling at the White Wolf Mountain. While there is no commentary, the song isn't fast-paced, and is more of a 
adventurous tone because the clip also lasts longer and has a faster paced song here actually would feel wrong. Another example is during No Bank 2, where while the clips also last longer, the track playing is called Deep Wildy. A very fast paced, tense song. So, while pacing wise the song might not actually match all that well, the vibe here overtakes the pacing since I am in the middle of the wilderness and it's pretty dangerous for a level 3 because of all the high level monsters going around that will one shot you and that have one shot me several times in that video, so there is that tension that props up the narrative. So sometimes you'll need to prioritize vibes, other times you'll need to prioritize pacing. The best is to always prioritize both if you can and have a song for it. The track playing after the dungeoneering montage is called Shining. It's a track that has this excitement but also a certain tone of tense triumph. So I think I should have all the tokens that I require uh, for the gold accumulator, so uh, show me the shop. This was used because I wanted a somewhat triumphant song, because we, well, I have all of the tokens required to buy the gold accumulator, but not full triumph, since we are not done yet with the grind. The tension then also carries to the next explanation, which will be the last serious one of the episode. Much like adventure, it has that adventurous tone, however, since it has also tension to it, you now have realized that the stakes are higher because we already put work and effort into our goal so the stakes are indeed higher and as a result the song also needs to reflect that they feel higher. The next section I want to touch on is on the one right after my head break. The song used there is called On The Wing. So we got our items, uh, as you can see the mage cape actually does a higher bonus in terms of attack. It's a very relaxing track. These questing moments on my Nobank series, I use them as a just noob doing quests. I want them to feel very noobish, which is why I don't tend to actually put a lot of editing into them and mostly just, you know, show my commentary as someone that's just sort of, you know, going through Gilenor and enjoying the quests and commenting on them as if I were a new player. These moments are usually the ones where you want tracks that are more laid back because, for me, I want to set a more relaxed mood. It also plays into the build-up as from here on the songs get progressively busier the closer we are to hitting the goal, as a way to communicate to the viewer that with every step we give, we are closer to that triumph. We go from on the wing, to greatness, to schools out, to a farmer's grind. Songs that get progressively more exciting and busier, although still maintain that noob amble vibes. Another pacing example is the short slayer grind. I use the song called M Attack. Since I completed a couple dozen Slayer tasks, I wanted to do a little montage instead of just using commentary, but since again, clips are short because otherwise it would just be a super long boring grind, M Attack fits this exciting, over the top, very fast paced action quite well. Not only are the clips short, but they're all related to killing creatures, so you know, this fast paced over the top song fits quite well. I also picked this song because at the beginning it starts with only percussion, which is great because it gets you prepared for the eventual full-blown start of the track. I used that portion of the percussion intro as an opportunity to show me getting my sprint cleaner back and just getting some springs and then just let the song go into full-blown once we actually fully get into the grind itself. And lastly, we have the moment we get our gold accumulator and we attach it to our tool belt. There we go, attach the gold accumulator to your tool belt. So here we want a triumphant song, a we did it song. For the end montage, I actually wasn't gonna pick a triumphant song, I was actually gonna go with the Dragon Tooth Island song, because I wanted a song that somewhat felt uh, triumphant, but also somewhat felt very melancholic, and I thought Dragon Tooth was a good song. So, this is the end of the grind, but it also indicates the beginning of a new adventure. Before I got that song in, however, I was adjusting my timings of the footage of that 
very little montage that I did at the end. And, well, the song that I actually had chosen to have the triumphant song when we got the Gold Accumulator was Warrior's Guild. And the end section, the end montage, was just perfect with Warrior's Guild. It's this perfect blend of triumphant with this undertone of leaving something behind, which is kind of accurate. The Warrior's Guild requires a total level of 130 between attack and strength, so when you join it, you are opening a new world, but you are leaving the noob days behind because you no longer are one. This track feels like a good heartfelt triumph goodbye to the noob days and a great welcoming to completing such a hard task on your journey, so honestly it just fitted so perfectly that I just left it in. So the song went from being this triumphant song where we get the gold accumulator to also being the goodbye song at the end since I thought, well, just fits really well as a goodbye song as well. Finally, it's even more impactful now because 15 hours after I released the video, Jagex released the Demon High visual rework, meaning that was actually the last time we saw Demon High the way it was. Couldn't ask for a more fitting goodbye of a song. Now, No Bank 8 did have more tracks, but I, I think that's the gist of it. But don't worry, because I have a few more examples. During the No Bank 3 finale, where I finally unlocked Invention, I decided to use the song called Animal Apogee. Again, it's a somewhat triumphant song with this dash of being magical that indicates not only did we accomplish something important, it feels magical. And, and well, Invention does kind of feel very magical because it's not a, your you know vanilla medieval unlock where you unlock a new sword. So I think the song just fitted that vibe perfectly. During No Bank 4, I used both versions of Newbie Melody, particularly at the end of the grind. And the Charming Imp. There we have our three items. Here it was more important that the song felt nice and warm, while also spelling the beginning of something else. In this case, the end was me buying all drop cleaners, and the next episode was me doing Slayer to attach them to the tool belt. So Newbie Melody ending here was used as a feel-good vibe because A, we finished the journey, while also having that, but this is not the end, rather it's the beginning of the next journey. Also during No Bank 4, there was a section where I wanted to use Born to Do This to introduce Demonheim, and then just sort of explain what the engineering was and how we were going to tackle it. Welcome to Demonheim. And then I decided to do the whole thing. Yeah, I did have the entire video clip for the entire song. Again, it's one of those cases where the song dictates the visuals, where both come together for a superior experience. And in this case, Born to Do This just served the hype for the actual grind. Lastly, and one of the most obvious examples I can give, take Twig 13. Bondi enters back for a brand new season. New arena, new rewards, and new rules. Twig is a series where I try my best to be funny while talking about new old school RuneScape updates. In this one, Bounty Hunter was re-released to the game, so what better song to go alongside my, you know, ad, fake ad for it than The Shadow Colossus. It's a high octane song, very in your face. And we are talking about a PvP activity, very fast paced, very high risk, in your face. And yeah, I mean, I think that this is by far one of the most simple examples and one of the easiest to understand. And that's the gist of the examples. I could give more, but I, I think I'm gonna shut up now. Well, I did say I was going to do your homework, so here I am. Uh, I have reviewed over 600 old school RuneScape songs at this point. You can check out the videos where I talk a bit about this song and give it a rating. In case you don't have, uh, say, several hours of your time to burn, I will actually just link the screenshots with the final tiers of the songs in the description, so you can just look at those. While obviously there's a level of bias there, it can be a good starting point. I know this list only includes Old School RuneScape and is missing part 7, which I am working on and will link in the description once it's done. Several tracks here are actually the exact same as in RuneScape 3, with very, very similar sound fonts. A couple hundred tracks are exclusive and a lot of them are actually just reworked. Personally, I would hear both versions when available, as some tracks just 
fit better depending on their versions. Warriors Guild was Bond's first track and yet for that moment I preferred the rework to RuneScape 3 version, which also might have been reworked by Bond, I'm not entirely sure. Before I get into some of the songs I find interesting and you could use, knowing of a place in RuneScape can actually be a great way to find songs. Music that supports visual storytelling tends to play to enhance it, so a song that plays at a boss will be more tense, over the top, a song that plays in Lumbridge will be more noobish, more amble and relaxed. So sometimes, if you don't know where to start, just go to the wiki and search a place and see which song plays there. The wiki also has genres you can check out, which can be a good way to find different types of songs. Usually Lumbridge songs are very rustic, very toned down, you know, very carefree, Varrock songs are somewhat the same but have a bit more adventure to them, songs that play in Zanaris are more magical and so on. And finally, the songs. This part will definitely feel more like incoherent ramblings of someone who spent too long listening to RuneScape music. I'm not gonna show bits of the songs cause I don't wanna be here all day. Born to do this, it's just the best hype song you have in the game. Like if you wanna hype anything up, just put this song on and job done. As I've mentioned earlier, this song has led me to make an entire video for it, an entire video montage for it. And then I did it again once I got a new PC, and then I used part of that new one on my Nobank 7. That's how good this song is. Dangerous Road. It's not as over the top as Born to Do This, but it's still a very hype song. It is more on the vanilla old school style, but it's still very good. Undercurrent. A bit more on the ten side, but it's still pretty great, I would say. Castle Wars. It's a classic for a reason, do you need high octane action, you know, fast paced action, anything, triumph from tension to combat, this song has you covered. Attack 2, it's great for tension, it's a really good song that just showcases how high the stakes actually are, again it's a bit on the, more on the vanilla side but it's still very good. Background, you don't have a more relaxing and peaceful song than this, it's just a beautiful track. Gnome Village 2, it's a great fun, exciting song with a certain devious moments all sprinkled throughout, it's a pretty good song to put on the background sometimes. Miracle Dance, it's a runecrafting altar song, which tend to be a bit more weird than out there, but it's honestly great if you have any more like technology moments I would say. Venture, need an archaeology song? Yeah, you can just use this one, although you can use any other archaeology song because they're all very good. Jungly 2, one of the funkiest songs the game has to offer. I would personally recommend the old school RuneScape version, but this song is actually pretty underrated. Land Lava, it's a fun, epic song. It's one of those that I have heard in videos already, but I never really realized that it was this specific song. Stratosphere, it's another weird runecrafting song. I love it, and honestly, I think that the beginning can actually be somewhat sampled as a sound effect for you to put in your videos. Breeze, it's essentially a Lambridge type song that plays in turn one, or at least I thought it was a Lambridge song when I heard that at first. Technology, it's one of the best tracks in the game, anything more modern that you know you have in the game that needs a song, this song is probably it, it makes everything sound very foreigner. Dragontooth Island, it's both melancholic, far away from home experience, but also this somewhat exciting adventure of exploring a new place. Time to Mine, it's another very funky, very fan song. Warriors Guild, again, triumphant song, I already mentioned it, but I have to mention it again because it's that good. I Caramba, the reworked song is actually really good, I love how upbeat it sounds and it sounds very fun, very sea shanty even. On the Wing, again, mentioned already, but it's very relaxing song, very beautiful, highly recommend using it. Creature Cruelty, while people usually tend to cite work work work, and rightfully might I have, this one is just as good, however it's essentially the sad version of work work work. Roots and Flutes, it's an incredibly funky song, it's a very fun song to listen to, again, use it on the more fun moments of your videos. A Farmer's Grind, this is more on the old school RuneScape exclusive as this song doesn't exist in RuneScape 3, but honestly I think it's that good to include here as it does sound like it plays in, you know, farming related content even in RuneScape 3. Animal Apogee, alongside Born to Do This, this is probably in my top 5 RuneScape 3 songs. Temple Desecrated, a classic very combat focused song. Carnelian Rising, it's a melancholic song and it's one of Bond's best works. 
Empyrean Citadel. If you want to feel alone and isolated, this is the song for you. Faces Obscura. It has a killer bass, so I have to include it here. Arise Legend. This song is so good, people actually wanted it in the game. And now it is, so if you need anything triumphant, this is the song for it. And lastly, Shadowland. Not in the RuneScape 3 version, but the old school RuneScape version. And I don't even mean the entire song either, I mean specifically the break at around like 220, which can be very, very sad, and honestly, I never really heard anyone use it, and I think it has a lot of potential. Obviously there are many, many, many more tracks, but these are just some examples I think you could use. They are very good tracks, some are easier to use, for sure, but you can't really go wrong using them. But yeah, I mean that's it for me, don't forget to check out the screenshots with the song tiers in the description for some guidance and just uh, have some fun.